Ankara maintains several maritime claims in the resources-rich regions of Eastern Mediterranean. Their claims, however, is highly contested by other regional powers such as Greece, Egypt, Israel, and Cyprus. In early 2000s the Turkish policymakers anticipated that Turkey will need a much stronger navy to protect its vital national interests, and to keep the balance of power in its favor in eastern Mediterranean. That is why in 2010, Turkey started the development of its national shipbuilding program known as Milgam, which aimed to boost the operational capacity and capability of its navy. So far under the Milgam program, Turkey completed the development of four ADA-class corvettes, two Istanbul-class frigates, a TF-2000-class destroyer which is currently in final stages of its construction, but most importantly the development of their first light aircraft carrier, the TCG Anadolu, which is currently undergoing sea trials, and will enter into active service in early 2022. The TCG Anadolu is the first light aircraft carrier of the Turkish Navy, developed by the Sedef Shipyard in collaboration with Navanshire Shipbuilding Company of Spain. The TCG Anadolu will be the flagship of the Turkish Navy for decades to come. Its construction began in April 2016 and is expected to enter into active service in early 2022. The TCG Anadolu will operate mostly in Black Sea, Aegean Sea, and in Eastern Mediterranean to further improve and reinforce the operational capability of the Turkish Navy. The TCG Anadolu design is loosely based on the SPS Juan Carlos, which is also a light aircraft carrier currently serving in the Spanish Navy. However, the TCG Anadolu is slightly larger than its Spanish counterpart. It has a length of 232 meters and width of 32 meters. The TCG Anadolu will be the largest warship of the Turkish Navy, with full load displacement of 27,500 tons. The TCG Anadolu will accommodate 200 crew members and a detachment of 60 Marines for search and rescue operations. The TCG Anadolu can carry up to six fighter aircrafts on its flight deck. Apart from that, it also has a 1,400 meters square hangar below the flight deck to accommodate various aircrafts, attack helicopters, and amphibious assault vehicles. The TCG Anadolu light aircraft carrier was originally designed to operate the carrier variant of the fifth-generation F-35 Joint Strike Fighter along with attack and transport helicopters. It was designed to carry up to 10 F-35 fighter aircraft, four attack helicopters, two Seahawk, and two medium-range transport helicopters. However, the United States kicked out Turkey of the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program and sanctioned its defense officials after they acquired the S-400 air defense system from Russia in mid-2020. The inability to acquire the F-35s for its carrier created a big challenge for the Turkish Navy. However, at the same time it provided Turkey with a unique opportunity to be the first country in the world to have a dedicated drone fleet operating from its aircraft carrier. The drone fleet aboard the aircraft carrier instead of fighter jets is very economical as it is greatly reducing the overall costs of maintaining and operating an aircraft carrier. It is also diminishing the risk of loss of life in case of being shot down by enemy defenses during airstrikes on its targets and thus increases its operational capability, as commanders on board will not have to worry about losing his men in action. Turkey has made serious headways in developing drones in recent years. These pilotless aircraft could well play a significant role in Turkey's navy, especially as Ankara increasingly uses it to project power across the Mediterranean, and its so-called Blue Homeland, a term Turks use to refer to the country's various maritime claims across the eastern Mediterranean. Turkish Bayraktar TB2 and Ankara S armed drones have already seen combat in Syria and Libya, where they've played decisive role in turning the tables against Turkey's adversaries. Turkey will soon begin mass production of its new Bayraktar Akinci drone, which can carry greater payloads and is expected to become the country's primary intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition, and command control communication aircraft for decades to come. Ankara has already working on building the naval variants of Akinci, Bayraktar TB3, and Ankara S drones to make them operable off the deck of TCG Anadolu. A combination of these three drones would hardly be a complete substitute for F-35 fighters, but they will help make the TCG Anadolu a more formidable foe.
The Akinchi drones operating from the TCG Anadolu could fly at high altitudes well out of the range of medium-altitude defense systems, and can effectively coordinate attacks carried out by Anker and Bayraktar drones. The Akinchi drone's long range, coupled with its ability to carry long-range cruise missiles will enable the TCG Anadolu to strike targets from hundreds of miles away. They can also provide air support for any landing operations carried out by the amphibious assault ships. The TCG Anadolu can carry 40 of these armed drones, along with two transport and two Seahawk helicopters on its flight deck and in the hangar. However, unlike the fighter aircrafts, these drones have almost no real air-to-air -air capabilities. Yes, the Akinci drone do have the capacity to carry Turkish-built air-to-air missiles. But given that turboprop drones are relatively slower and lacking high maneuverability, it will mainly be used as an air-to-ground strike platform. For protection against aerial threats, the TCG Anadolu is equipped with a two-layered defense network that constitute of RAM surface-to-air missiles and phalanx close-in weapon system. The RAM is a medium-range supersonic fire and forget surface-to-air missile, currently deployed on more than 170 ships of 11 different countries. It is guided by passive radio frequency as well as infrared guidance system for course correction mid-air. The RAM air defense system is very effective against incoming projectiles, as it is specifically designed to shoot down anti-ship missiles. Apart from the RAM, the TCG Anadolu is also protected by the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System as a point defense weapon to shoot down anti-ship and cruise missiles. The Phalanx Sea Whiz is a 6-barreled 20mm radar-guided Gatling gun which can fire up to 4,500 bullets per minute, with effective operational range of 1,200 meters. The Phalanx Sea Wizards are the last line of defense for any military asset it is deployed on. Apart from the onboard self-defense weapons, the Gabu-class frigates and the ADA-class corvettes will also provide it with effective air defense umbrella for up to 200 kilometers. Turkey is currently operating four ADA-class corvettes and four more will be inducted into its navy by 2023. Two of the currently four active ADA-class corvettes are dedicated to air defense role. These corvettes along with the TF-2000-class destroyer will accompany the TCG Anadolu as part of a carrier strike group, and will provide it air defense coverage against incoming projectiles. The induction of the TCG Anadolu will transform the regional power projection capability of the Turkish naval forces into a regional-level Blue Water Navy. The presence of the TCG Anadolu Carrier Strike Group in Eastern Mediterranean will tilt the balance of power in the favor of the Turkish Navy. This development may force other regional powers closer to each other to create some sort of anti-Turkey alliance. Will it create such scenario in the future is remains to be seen, but one thing is pretty clear, if such rapid growth of the Turkish Navy continues, it may soon become the regional superpower in Eastern Mediterranean and Aegean Sea. That's all on the topic for now. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel, also press the bell icon to get updates about our future videos. Take care and have a great day.